Hi, and welcome to the Imaginal Podcast. This is a place that protects and explores what we need to actualize our uniqueness. And like the caterpillar, who carries its butterfly blueprint in its imaginal cells all the way to the chrysalis and then melts into liquid before it transforms. We too have an inner knowing that can tell us how to make our wings. And here's your host, life coach and consultant, Lori Sauce, who goes most commonly by her nickname, Sauce. Hello, it's Sauce. Welcome back to the podcast. I hope you're having a beautiful start to your week or are having a good week, depending on when you listen to this. Today, we're going to talk about exploring your gifts and contributing them to the world. And that could bring up a myriad of things. Sometimes we definitely know what some of our gifts are. And the problem is, is that sometimes we might feel held back from sharing them whether that's self-doubt or it could be lots of different things, time. But for whatever reason, we have these gifts and we know that it would be impactful for people, but we don't share them or we don't get around to sharing them. And so sort of thinking about that is one aspect. Another is perhaps you don't realize the power or the blessing or the impact that you could have on lives just because you're used to your own self and you don't realize what unique things you bring to people, whether that's one-on-one or whether that's in a group of people or whether that's contributing something to the world at large. And it's interesting, isn't it, to have a life that's marked by what we do on a daily basis and we have some established routines, which probably are really meaningful. But once in a while, we stop and we think, what is the meaning? of my life? And am I living out my purpose? And am I expressing myself as fully as I could? And it's in those moments, sometimes it's worth just taking a little bit of an inventory. What are your gifts? And today we talk about the fact that those could be quite wide and really robust, not to mention the fact that the combination of what you bring between your gifts, your experience, your personhood, that is very profoundly different than anybody else. And so today, Leslie Page and I enter into conversation about the importance of contributing our gifts, understanding what those are, and also seeing where the roadblocks are, the things that might prevent us from contributing or from sharing or even being aware that we have something or more than one thing to contribute. I think it's such a beautiful and worthy thing to consider. And it's my heart for this podcast that you don't lose sight of all that you bring and all of who you are. I don't mean to pressure you or to say you need to be doing something, but more do you feel that your life is expressing itself and contributing in the ways that you really want to. So I asked Leslie Page to come back She is a beloved part of this podcast. She's become a regular, and I am so grateful every time that she comes on because she is so self-reflective and so relational and so talented, and she thinks through things in such faceted ways, and she's incredibly inspiring, and she has a gift of encouragement, so I think you will enjoy what she has to say today. Uh, I will also link her other episodes in the show notes in case you want to catch up With her, she has shared some profoundly beautiful, inspiring, and also some really funny things. So if you don't know Leslie yet, she is a professional singer, songwriter, and music and dance teacher. I say this every time, but she has a gorgeous singing voice, and it resonates from the depths of her experience and her insights. And she's also a great entertainer. She's very relatable, and her art shows that so magnificently. Over the last 20 years, she's been singing with so many legendary people like Joe Walsh from the Eagles, with whom she toured. And I will list all the people that she has worked with. But gosh, there is such a beautiful array of people, including Keith Urban, Vince Gill, Rick Springfield. The list is really long and beautiful. And it's from her deep heart, her talent and her experiences that she speaks. I hope you enjoy it. Here is my conversation with Leslie Page. 
Hey, everyone. I'm back with Leslie Page. Hello. I asked Leslie to be on this podcast because I really wanted to talk about the idea of gifts. And I just couldn't think of anyone better to speak on this because there's so much nuance and complexity to it. And one thing that I've been finding in my work with people and also just in my travels through life is that a lot of times there are people who just have so much giftedness yet don't realize how valuable those gifts are and why it would be important to bring those to the world. So we thought we would talk today about how do you know what your gifts are? And sometimes that can be a little even kind of nebulous, I would say. So Les, for you, what makes this such an important topic, the idea of knowing what your gifts are and how that might even be hard to know sometimes? Oh, well, for me, I think it almost goes back to like, why are we here in the first place? Yeah, that that ethereal question of like, what are we doing here in this world? Why was I created? Why am I here? And everybody has a different idea about that. But I think once you figure out what your purpose is, and the giftings that support that purpose, then obviously we have jobs and we have lives and we have to work and we have to do things. But that that's the drive mm-hmm. for why we keep going, you know, and, and some of us are fortunate enough to be able to use our gifting and make money at it. That's my blessing. I'm so thankful that the gifting that I've been given, I can actually support myself with. And then there's the other side of the coin where people work so that they can then go and live and do whatever that gifting is for them. But I think it ultimately comes back to purpose. Yes. And I think when you and I were talking before, you brought up the idea of just your own self as being a gift, your personhood, which I suppose would integrate, I guess there's different kinds of gifts, right? The being of us and the gifts of the talents, maybe. Sure. Yeah. Because I think there's obviously gifting that's external and then there's gifting that's internal. Like some people have a gifting of, you know, being able to say things that are difficult in a way that's kind and loving. Other people have a gifting to be able to lead people. You know, other people have tactile gifts, art music, building, vision to be able to create buildings, engineering mindsets, you know, going back to da Vinci. I remember when I was in Italy with my mom in November, we went to a da Vinci museum. Mm. And it was fascinating to see that even back then, the way his mind was thinking in order to create things that would make life easier, make digging a hole for farming easier. Everybody has something. I mean, sometimes, you know, the internal could be more compassion or somebody that just always chooses to see the best in somebody or also is able to discern funky things in people. You know, those would be maybe more internal giftings versus the external. But all of it is encompassed in who we are. And I, I don't think we're just limited to one. I think we all have a beautiful multitude of combinations of all these incredible gifts but we don't think of them as gifts. So we almost not take them for granted, but we just don't even, we're not even aware of the power that we have to, to impact somebody in a positive way with these gifts when we don't even see them as gifts in the first place. We just pass them off or, or just don't even acknowledge that as a thing. No, that's so true. I think we're so used to our own selves that we don't even know that maybe we are unique in yeah. certain ways. And So if you're listening, as we continue this conversation, I might ask, of all those things that Leslie brought up and also so many other ideas that could exist, whether they're talents or whether they're gifts of personhood or the ways we show up, I guess I don't need to repeat everything you said, but you said those things so beautifully. For you listening, what's coming up for you? What kinds of gifts do you have? Also, you know, We might add to that list too, as I'm just comes up for me is the idea of experience. Like, what have you experienced in life that might be really a great offering for other people? And whether that's like a health challenge or something financially, whatever that is, you know, we can really touch into those places. And as not that we're trying to wish hardship on people, but sometimes that experience of going through something in life can really be a gift. To help someone else. Absolutely. I 
literally think of everything in my past that I've been through. You know, when you're in it, you're not thankful. When you're in it, you're just like, oh gosh, get me out of this thing. Or how long is this mm-hmm. going to last? Or why is this hurt so much? Or wh- whatever it is that we're dealing with. And everybody has some sort of hardship. Mm-hmm. Every- there's not one person on this earth that has not experienced some sort of devastation or pain or trauma or negative experience. But when you're on the other side of that and you see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, like what an incredible gift to be able to come alongside someone who's not quite where you're at. Yes. You know, and that's what also helps us to shift that mindset of bitterness and anger towards the things that we've experienced. And that's even a process trying to figure that out, you know, and process through all of that stuff and get to the other side where, you know, that experience can be considered something to be thankful for. Every time I go to the clinic at UCLA, uh, for those of you who don't know, I had leukemia. I had a bone marrow transplant. It'll be eight years in August. And every time I go into clinic, and I still have to go every six months just to get checked up, but I'm always running into somebody or meeting somebody who's just about to go through a bone marrow transplant and they're terrified. And I'm so thankful that I'm there to be able to say, hey, I'm on the other side of this by almost eight years. See where I'm at? This is possible. This is not as hard as you think it's going to be. It's going to be hard, but you can get through it. And the ability to be able to say that authentically, because I've been through that experience myself, is Mm -hmm. so powerful. So what you said is, I absolutely agree with you, 100%. I can't think of a more valuable gift to receive. And even for me, just being on the other side of the that equation when I got diagnosed with polycystic liver disease and one of the surgeons I mentioned recently with Stephen Page just gave me no hope. He said, there's really nothing we can do for you. And then I met a collection of people who had been through this procedure that I didn't even know existed and gave me so much hope. And how also to be known, right, for how painful and scary and un- unknown the whole path is. Just have someone come in like you, Leslie. I'm picturing me if I was in the waiting room at UCLA and you came in for checkup, for you to be able to share so authentically, so lovingly, so empathically, like not negating how hard it is, but to give that assurance. There, Talk about gifts. What more of a gift could you give to someone? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there are different sides to this gifting mm-hmm. some is through experience and some is through just what we were born with or what we've learned or how we just sort of tend to draw towards things. But all of it, that's the all encompassing big gift. It's like, it's like the Russian doll where it's just like, there's the big <laughs> gift on the outside, then you dig deeper, and you dig deeper and you've got all these different things. And all of that to say is every single one of those things, again, is all of these gifts that we've been given or experienced are meant to contribute back. You know? Yes. And I think that's where sometimes we get lost or we get stuck in the either fear of not wanting to use the gifts that we've been given or not even realizing that when we have gifts or on the other side where you've been through something and you're just so angry and so bitter and so hurt, whether that was a betrayal or an illness or a financial setback, whatever it is, choosing to turn those into gifts because they can very easily be turned into not a gift if we don't have the right mindset about it. So I think this is an important little conversation to not only discover what those gifts are, but also discover what we've been holding down. Yes. Holding back on or not using or choosing to still hang on to what it was versus what it has transformed you into. Right. I think it would be so meaningful to be able to take those things, as as people have said, like in your mess is your medicine. I think Francis Weller may have said that, or in your pain is your passion. Mm-hmm. But also, also, and and I uh, I know you would agree with this. Not to put words in your mouth, I'm just put words <laughs> in your mouth, though. You can. That's <laughs> but, right. I pr- I'm gonna agree with you. I'm sure. <laughs> um, but is to ensure that we're in places that that we get the love and the healing that we need to move us through those spaces. So sometimes if we get stuck, it's just maybe because we didn't have enough holding space for Mm -hmm. that area, which would 
also be the flip side of why someone else coming in with their gifts would be so meaningful. Here we go. Absolutely. Right? There it is. That's the full circle. Mm. Because if we're not sharing our experience and sharing the other side of the experience, the people that are in it are going to feel just as abandoned and alone, you yes. know, and having to just struggle through it. And at some point, somebody in the cycle is going to have to step up and take the courage to find the positive. And then that starts perpetuating a new cycle of positivity out of that thing. That's so beautiful, isn't it? it yeah. And it almost brings us back to what you were saying at the beginning about the existential idea of why am I here? Like, what is this purpose? I'm not trying to say everything has a purpose or every trauma was a good thing in the end. I'm not trying to, it's more, much more, you know, faceted sure. than that. But yeah, yeah. this idea of like our purpose, and maybe we will talk about this another time, but I know you are, and I have also talked about how consumptive our society is these days and how we can be extractive, but to bring that contribution of your gifts and we're not trying to say, you know, everyone listening, you're being so consumptive and you're not bringing your gifts. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? Just <laughs> and we don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> no, of course not. Definitely I'm, not not. A, I'm not on TikTok 24 hours a day scrolling through other people's lives. <laughs> not at all me. No. <laughs> I think we're just bringing this conversation because it's really easy to not know the gifts that we do have and how valuable they are and how unique they are. And like you were saying, with the different layers of gifts and the doll analogy, we, we have such a unique life experience paired with our gifts. And together, that is unlike anything. And like if you're a math person, the combinations and permutations, it's extravagant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful tapestry of colors and experiences and gifts and and I think as you were saying that, I was thinking also once you discover that, whatever those things are inside of you, actually giving yourself permission to express them. Yes. You know, as a world that is so focused on consumption, sometimes I watch, I'll just speak from my own experience, I'll watch these things online and I'll think I could do that. Mm. But why don't I? Why exactly. don't I bring to the table my experience? I think that's where, you know, maybe the mind starts going into comparison or judgment of ourselves, whether it's the shame of our, the experience that we've been through, how is it going to be received by others, mm -hmm. you know, all those different layers and levels to why we don't open up and actually share the giftings that we've been given. But I think in a conversation like this, understanding that everybody's gifting and everybody's experience is equal. And I, I'm not saying in as far as the impact of what it's been, but mm -hmm that they're all equally valuable. Yes. Yes. That there's not one gifting that's, oh, that's so much, your, that gifting is so much better than mine. How dare I even consider opening up my mouth and sharing my side of the story? Because for every single person's experience, there's going to be at least one person that can relate. Yes. If not many more, Miss Mathematician and all of your... <laughs> you <laughs> well, know, that was a, from my former life. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really dabble in that as much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's how we met and engaged. You haven't yeah, heard exactly. Leslie and I. Leslie was in my math class when I was teaching high school. Yes. And best math best, teacher ever. Best, no, best, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm the luckiest to have had you. But yes, no, you're so right about that. You are so 100% right. <laughs> Infinitely right. No, <laughs> there know, we go. Good. There you go. Yeah, no, the, stretch. <laughs> not really, though. You know, I mean, it's actually at the heartbeat of this whole podcast. It's my whole feeling was how do people actualize all that they're meant to be? And you know what kind of drove this idea for me? And I, I'll pose this question because I know we're running out of time, but maybe we could, I could pose this to you, Les. I'm putting you on the spot here. Um, and then I'll pose this to the listener too. So a number of years ago, I took some coaching sessions from someone named Antonia Dodge from the Personality Hacker podcast, which I highly recommend and I will link in the show notes. And she asked me this question that really made me think and has had such a profound impact on the path that I have wanted to travel ever since I met with her. And the question was, if you were given a megaphone and the whole world stood still for 10 minutes and everyone listened to you, what would you want to say? 
Oh, that question gives me the chills. Mm. That's heavy. That's heavy. So you're asking me what what would I say, or are yeah. you just posing this question uh, to well, everybody? Both. And you know, to be fair, I had a long time to think about it. So yeah. you're welcome to come back on another episode and <laughs> add to it. But I don't you know, know why I'm making the rules. Like you. <laughs> Oh well, God. it is your podcast, so you no. make all the rules. <laughs> okay, so, okay. If I had, since I am given such a very short period of time to dig into this extremely deep existential question, existential question <laughs> I think ultimately at the end of the day, I would say something as simple as like, you are loved, mm -hmm. you are okay. Um, probably all the same things I would want to hear for myself. Honestly, Ooh. you know, I would want to say, you know, how they always say, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Like, I would want to share love. I would want to share compassion, understanding, sympathy. Uh, I would hold space. Ooh. And, Ooh. You know, mm. hold space for everybody to understand that what you're feeling in the moment, although feelings are not facts and they don't last forever. They're actually more road signs than they are something to sit into and lean into as part of your identity, but that that's okay. And, um, you know, I would probably just give words of encouragement because that's one of my giftings is being able to build people up and not in a, in a blowing smoke or being fake kind of way, but actually being able to see the individual. And it's probably comes from my, you know, very observant <laughs> internal perspective but to be able to just show people love i don't know how that answer gets any better it's beautiful you know because at the end yeah. of the day you could be reading the manual on how to fix the washer and dryer in your house <laughs> <laughs> you could do something like that you know but i think for me i would just i would share words of encouragement because mm -hmm. i think that's what we need the most and not only that, circling back to, you know, giving permission for others to acknowledge that they have gifts in the first place. Yes. Yes. That was part of mine. I just want people to know their worth and their beauty and how much they're loved. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, no, that's gorgeous. And, you know, you, you do. I want to just acknowledge and affirm you do that all the time you seamlessly integrate that in the ways that you interact with people and it never feels like blowing smoke because you are just to the core such an authentic person yeah. so i try to be <laughs> yeah, you no. know but i think that's probably one of my heart's purest intentions yeah because you just don't see enough of that you know especially nowadays with the way the world is and anonymity on the internet everybody is so eager to cut each other down in mm -hmm. order to build themselves up. Cause I think ultimately that intention is because of a, an insecurity in that person. Cause people yep. that are secure don't need to prove that they're better by cutting somebody else down or whatever. So I, I think just battling all of that with love and kindness and even just, I make it a point to when I'm walking down the street, I see somebody, I'll look at every single person and I'll find something that's really cool about that person. Mm -hmm. And if I see that I'm in a space where I can tell them, I do. Lovely. Like, hey, oh my gosh, like your hat is so cool. Or oh my gosh, like your hair color is so beautiful with your skin tone. Or oh my gosh, wow, look at your hair. Like whatever it is, like I just find something in somebody and yes. give, it, give it to them. Because no. who wouldn't want to hear that? True, true. <laughs> you know? Yes. And you know, I... I just think that people are so amazing, whether we know them or not. They are this complex, beautiful being. So one thing that I do, which may be in the similar vein, is that when I see people walking down the street, like let's say I'm driving by or they're walking across the crosswalk in front of me or they're just sitting in a car next to me, I love to sing this song over people. Like I'll just play it on my, in my car stereo and just start singing it over people. And it's a song called Shine by Benjamin Francis Leftwich. And I actually did get his permission to even speak on it. Um, the chorus says, I hope you find 
the love that's true, so the morning light can shine on you. I hope you find what you're looking for, so your heart is warm forevermore. Mm. And I just, I love this conversation, Leslie, and I'm so grateful that you're here with me. One of the reasons I thought about you is because you live out this heart-led way of offering yourself and your gifts and your thoughts and your presence and your empathy, just so many things that you offer to the world. And I have received a billion gifts from you and the way you contribute to the world at large, as well as individual lives is just so stunning. So thank you. Oh, thank you. You're going to make me cry. Mm -hmm. So quickly, we're going to do a little anecdotal lightness and things that are fun. I'm already laughing. I'm already laughing about it because we've talked about it. <laughs> I'll let you go from here. <laughs> Are we talking about the video? Yes. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> so I don't even remember how this came up. I don't remember what we were talking about that precipitated me we bringing talk- up this video. <laughs> editing, I think. Or editing. Like oh, how talking- to- yeah. <laughs> yes. We were talking about <laughs> editing, me being a singer. And you've been working on podcasts and editing out, you know, mistakes and in clips and comping them together is what we call it. You know, comping is bringing two separate tracks into one to create one sound. And I was reminded of this <laughs> video of this girl. I'm sure a lot of you watching or listening have seen this video, but it's a young girl. She's probably maybe nine or 10 singing. <laughs> I will always love you by Whitney Houston, but she's got no backing track. She's just singing a cappella, and every time she tries to sing, she's coming in at the most powerful point of the song, and it's just a flop every single time. And the poor girl, she she'll try it, and uh, ah, and she'll just start <laughs> screaming. And then she'll try it again a little lower, and and then her voice will crack, and she just keeps going. You have to put the link. I will put the link. Yes. No, it's so cute. And we're not laughing at her. Like, she's amazing. Yeah. No, it's just we've all been there. Yeah. We've all been to that place where we're just (laughs) trying so hard to do the thing. And you just, it it never feels right. (laughs) It's just like, it's a series of try after try after try. And Mm -hmm. and she's like, ah, and like, she's like, and and this is me. This is me when I'm practicing singing. And she's trying to hit this like, unreal note right like right I'm just trying to hit like a normal note and I will be doing the same thing and I loved when she like fixes her hair or she like oh, does yeah. something because I do that too or I'm like I'm yeah. trying again and I'm, you're like ah you know yeah. how does that sound <laughs> okay dig in this time <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute oh, it's so adorable and it's bless. like so um, so relatable oh my gosh so so relatable I imagine Anybody trying to do anything, you know, trying to learn how to play the guitar. Yes. You know, oh, for example, the it. whole time I'm sitting in COVID in my bedroom with my door closed, just <laughs> my fingers are on fire and I still am just pinging the wrong <laughs> thing. And I'm like, what? My fingers are too fat for this guitar. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I've convinced myself of things <laughs> like wrong with my fingers trying to do, you know, trying to fret chords. I'm like, right. oh, something is wrong with my fingers. <laughs> Yeah. And then, you know, I see other guitar players with like way fatter fingers than me. And I'm like, how are they doing this? <laughs> yeah. You don't have fat fingers, by the way. Well, it's, I thought the pads of my, you know, they were just, I kept, I don't even know what the word is for fumbling on a note or when you just, you're not even holding it down hard enough. And yeah, you're just, you get the buzz or the, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. We yeah. all can relate. But, you know, I think the most, even more powerful thing about the, that video is that she keeps going. Yes. Oh, she's no matter so how awesome. frustrated, no matter how frustrated she gets, no matter how much she screams, she keeps trying. And I think that is the best, best message out of the whole video. Yes. And I love the fact that like when I was laughing, I was laughing at myself. I was like, that's me. Mm-hmm. And it's so good to be able to laugh at yourself and not get so because maybe we'll talk about this in another episode, but that's where we get into like, oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, I have to prove my gifts, but really it's not that. So, right. And also the fact that she just posted that video. Yeah. Full vulnerability and realness that she did not hit one of those notes. Right. But she still put that out. And that again, that's humility. 
that's humility being put out there. That is one of her gifts. Yes. And inspiration. Like it makes yes. us not ashamed. Like, oh, yeah. that's me. That's how I feel. Like I'm like, oh, yeah. I, you know? Yep. Yeah. She put even her weakness was a, was a, is a gift. A gift. Yes. Oh my and gosh. then she shared it and everybody that's, I mean, this video has probably had millions of views and imagine the impact that that little girl probably didn't even realize she was going to have on yes. every single person that has watched that video over and over and over for however many years it's been on there. Yes. And the ripple effect of your gifts, you also do not know. And we probably should end this because yeah. <laughs> we're going to, yeah. there's <laughs> so much that I want to talk about. Just going to edit. I'm going to cut <laughs> all the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, well, Leslie, thank you so much. Where can people find you if they want to connect with you? Yeah, they can go to my website, lesliepage.com, P-A-G-E. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook. You can find my music on Spotify, Apple, iTunes, all that stuff. Just look up Leslie Page or Leslie Page Music, P-A-G-E, and I'm there. You can find me there. I know I say this every time, but I definitely recommend it. You will be so blessed. By Leslie's music and as you know her just her whole being and personhood so talk about gifts yes Aww. okay you can find me on Instagram at Lori Sase it's L-O-R-I-S-A-S-E or my website lorisase.com if you want to find out about coaching or sign up for my newsletter and we really want you to know your gifts yep and even if you don't know what they are that doesn't mean you don't have them Exactly. Just means there's a little adventure ahead of you to figure it out. Yes. And even if you know some of them, see what else there is out there. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right, everyone. We <laughs> hope you have a beautiful week. We'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, Les, I'm so, so glad. Oh, I'm Hello. laughing already. Oh, that's not what I was laughing at. <laughs> that's what I was laughing at. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Only child syndrome, folks. I just have all these voices inside of me. <laughs> oh, I had pretend friends, three of them, actually. So I must have been really in need of friends. Well, <laughs> which are important. I'm, I'm not even knocking them. They played a really great role in my life, actually. Hey, Where are we in this conversation? Oh, my God. <laughs> sometimes they're better than our actual friends. <laughs> I rigged it so that I always won the competitions. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> yes, it is. It actually is something that I've gone over in therapy. So, um, oh, that's good. That was a really weird low voice. Okay, here we go. Take oh my back. gosh. Dial it back. Okay.